Hi, I'm Jordan North, and today we're cranking down the saturation to zero and taking a roll of Lomo Berlin to London. So before we start, you might have noticed something a little different. No, Jacob, it's not my hair. I mean, it's the new place. Fucking dumbass. But yeah, we got a new place, and because of the housing market in the UK at the moment, we only found out we got the place a week before we moved in. Hence the fairly sporadic uploads the past month or two. But I promise I'm back to uploading regularly from today. Anyway, now with that location-shaped elephant out of the way, let's jump straight into it. I'd already planned a trip to go see my friend Brian's uncle's band. A bit obscure, I know, but as a good little Brit, I'll take any excuse to go get drunk with strangers. And look, there's a reason this country's economy is 90% pubs, 8% kebab vans, and 2% other. As Brian was busy at work in the day, I decided to make the most out of my overpriced train ticket and take some shots around the big city. I decided to take the Canon AE-1 rather than the behemoth Pentax 6.7 this time as it's a lot more stealthy. And as you can probably tell from the intro, I kind of wanted an excuse to use Lomo's Berlin stock anyway. Which from what I'd seen from buying it in a fit of late night madness months before, was essentially made for urban cityscape shots, which seemed perfect for this trip. Setup wise, I just whacked the roll of film in and used a GoPro cold shoe mount to jankly fit the Insta360 on top of the camera. Check out the last video up there or in the description if you haven't seen about that camera already. This is so I could show you what I was taking photos of without being overly in your face and obvious, which would kind of ruin the whole point of street photography anyway. After the ticket inspector had a quick look, I took some shots around the train. Something looks something very sophisticated. Slow camera. Okay. <laughs> to me, everything looks sophisticated. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Once I got to London, I started my awkward solo street photography trip by taking some shots on the way to the first main location. The first main location on the trip was Covent Garden, and you might ask, out of all of London, why did you choose Covent Garden? And the answer is Muji, because I needed some toothbrushes. After my essential shop, I carried on. Before I stopped again, but this time at the nerd mecca Forbidden Planet. After grabbing some small bits for the wifey, I moved on to the next one. Where I realised I'd already taken this exact same picture out on a separate trip with Tina on the Pentax. So I thought it'd just be good to show the difference, even if it's not exactly a fair comparison between the two. After a couple more shots, I once again headed back down on the tube to go and see Brian for what I'd actually travelled all this way for. And after going to Brian's mum's house and explaining that it's black and white film, I of course had to take a shot of their bright matching green outfits. Uh, Then Brian grabbed his Instax camera and we headed out to his uncle's band's gig.
As you can see, as the night went on and I was fed drinks by his family, the pictures got more artistic. Then as the bar closed, we followed some of Brian's family out. Had an extreme shopping trolley race. <laughs> and then casually crashed at someone's house for a bit. I have no idea whose house it was, but it was a lovely house. <laughs> You might be saying something like, well, even if you were there till 4 a.m., Jordan, at least you had a good weekend. Well, I was having a good weekend until I remember we had to get up and leave by 9 a.m. for the hour and a half drive back to my place. Our only saving grace, godly Tims, which saved our souls from a hellish hangover. Tims, 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 Timmy, Timmy, in my t- Uh, what? I don't know why I was gonna go with that one. And then to round off the trip, still slightly hungover, I built a whole frog-themed PC for Brian. We had planned this beforehand. It wasn't just out of the blue, by the way. So yeah, aesthetics wise, I actually quite like this film stock as the grain and the contrast are just right for cityscape and like street photography shooting. It's definitely intended more for bright outdoor city shooting than dark indoor night photography style shooting but it does what it says on the tin in fairness. In saying all that though, I don't live in a big city. And other than shooting in the fog and rain, I don't actually like black and white photography all that much. A bit ironic seeing as I've got a load of it in the fridge at the moment, but anyway. But that's just my personal preference, so I think anyone who's looking to try something new and is going to an urban area should definitely pick up a roll to try. As for what it does, it does it extremely well and pleasingly. Great show, eh? Yeah, I'm a bit of a fan, so I come here every week now, especially now they're uploading twice a week on Monday and Fridays. Not much of a talker. Yeah, I get ya. I mean, seeing as you're such a big fan though, you should definitely check out the subscribe and bell button. I mean, I'm sure he'd appreciate it, but it also keep you up to date every time he uploads. I mean, you can't trust the algorithm, so that's a thing. Oh, also on that note, check out their Patreon, because there's a load of behind the scenes stuff on there. I love it. I love seeing all the scripts, behind the scene photos, full res photos as well, some footage and stuff that you won't see on the main channel. So that's great. And there's their Instagrams, both of them. They both upload their sort of like extra pictures and extra behind the scenes, but again, mainly the Patreon's best for that kind of stuff. So yeah, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, check it out. Oh, you're off, are you? All right, I'll see you next week then.